Well, again, thanks everyone for your patience. And this is sort of, it would be an allegory or a metaphor. It's a trial run for what we're being called on now in the world, because we're all sort of like racehorses at the gate us vision keepers in this room. And we're waiting for that new world, the beloved community to already be out there in action. And it turns out that we need patience and this is sort of how we get to practice. So um, welcome to our exploration of Dr. Martin Luther King's love method for reconciliation and the creation of the beloved community. And this, um, event today is really an up leveling of an event that uh, Connie and Andrew and Rita and Barry, who I'll introduce in a minute, initiated back in 2013 in Colorado in the Roaring Fork Valley. And this was their first uh, step on uh, creating beloved community and what was it all about? What is the dream? What is that vision that Martin Luther King had? And so in honor of that, because I too spent many, many years in the Roaring Fork Valley, and behind me you'll see a very famous, sacred, beautiful, magical site in the Roaring Fork Valley called Maroon Bells. These three mountain peaks here and this beautiful lake. And it is really holds the heart and soul of mother nature's uh, opportunity and all she holds for what the world can be. And so with that, I'm gonna introduce um, some of our panelists and I'm gonna read it, cheat here because I don't wanna make a mistake. Connie and Andrew right here, Connie Baxter Marlowe and Andrew Cameron Bailey, I think you can figure out who's who, are Truly original thinkers, writers, photographers, filmmakers, futurists, climate solutionaries, and authors of a very important game-changing book of which I'm a great fan called The Trust Frequency. Hold that thought and hold those two words in your mind because we are going to take you on a ride on The Trust Frequency because it provides the pathway. This is uh, 10 Assumptions for a New Paradigm. And the book is a toolkit for assessing higher frequencies and achieving beloved community. And it's the subject of today's talk. And I encourage you all to get one. I give it, them out to friends when I can. Rita Marsh. Uh, Rita is co-founder of the Center for Human Flourishing in Carbondale, Colorado. She is a former 40 plus year RN and family nurse practitioner who is proactive in the areas of integrative health, healing of the self, family, community, and the environment through education, the arts, and self-empowerment, and the transformation of consciousness. And then here we have Barry Chapman. He's an enthusiastic musician mm -hmm. who composes and creates varying sounds and vibrations. He's exceptionally innovative in creating programs for children that open their worlds and the magic of music. Barry is also an athlete who instructs bilateral movement in many, many sports. And now he's gonna take us into our hearts with some pros and an invocation from and to the ancestors. Gary, go for it. Greetings to everyone. And today I would like to take you through just a, a, reminder, a reminder of going into our heart side. And you can just listen to the frequency and dial in, you can repeat if you like. And I'll begin. In my heart, there is beauty. In my heart, there is love. In my heart burns a fire. From the fire shines the light. It's the light of love. It's the light of beauty. So beautiful are we. 
We are the rainbow tribe, so beautiful are we. May we come into our hearts with great intentions of maintaining the hearth of love, burning the fire of love, and let your light shine like no other time. Namaste. We are, I like to do a tribute to our ancestors to invite them in. And let's be reminded that we are the answered prayers of our ancestors. Their dream still lives in our cells, in our bodies, in our minds. Their dreams still live because we're manifesting our dreams, which are some of their dreams, moving into the light of this time and this stage of, of, of the world here uh, on this planet. Despite the chaos, let your light shine. Namaste. Namaste. Thank you so much, Barry, for bringing us into our hearts and welcoming our ancestors. Martin Luther King is an ancestor to all of us. And just keeping in mind that our ancestors worked hard to bring us forth into this life we have now. And our choices are going to make the difference for our descendants for whom we'll be their ancestors. So let's be great ancestors, shall we all? And Martin Luther King with his beloved community, his vision of beloved community and this love method is accessing a higher frequency. And we, this talk today is going to take us all into our hearts, into this higher frequency that he saw he wasn't only an activist he, for social justice, he was a reverend. He was a man of God and he was, had a doctorate in theology. So this permeated everything he saw and everything he knew. And he saw this higher reality he resonated to. And now we're all starting to resonate to our hearts, to this higher reality. And the, the way showers, that that came before gandhi jesus john lennon america's founders uh, resonated to this higher frequency and martin luther king believed in the promise of america that's playing out right now in this these times of of, of cleansing and coming forth into a true democracy and so let's go forth now and explore his love method. And Barry's going to first take us into a song that will bring Martin Luther King to the present right here, right now. Yeah. Oh. 
there are going to be a day, it is today, that we should overcome the oppressions, the need to oppress others. We shall, we shall overcome. We shall. Thank you, Barry. Thank you very much. Yeah, Barry, thank you. That was a beautiful rendering. And um, uh, I want to hear that loud and strong at some point. We'll do that again, my friend. Okay, Dad. Uh, yes. Then, yeah. Andrew. Yeah. To... And well, my thank name, you. I'm going to introduce myself just for the fun of it. I'm Andrew Bailey, and I grew up in South Africa in the same town that Mahatma Gandhi grew up in and in the same country that Nelson Mandela came from. And I was very aware of Dr. Martin Luther King over in America because we were fighting something called apartheid. And that song that Barry just sang for us was banned in South Africa because it's a freedom song. It was regarded as a communist anthem. How about that, my friends? Mm -hmm. sure? I mean, very few Americans know that. So each of us is now going. Oh, wait, wait a second. Somehow you all just got muted. So I'm. Okay, here we go. So go on, Andrew. So the next thing we're about to do is each of us, each of the panelists here is going to present a quote from Dr. Martin Luther King starting with Rita Marsh. Rita? Thank you. It's so delightful to be all together again, even though we're in different parts of the country. Here we are. And uh, to speak about beloved community and the trust frequency as a, a way to live into that. The quote I'm going to give to you today came from the role of the church in facing the nation's chief moral dilemma delivered by Dr. Martin Luther King in 1957. He said, but the end is reconciliation. The end is redemption. The end is the creation of the beloved community. It is this type of spirit and this type of love that can transform opposers mm -hmm. into friends. The type of love that I stress here is not Eros, a sort of aesthetic or romantic love, not Philia, a sort of reciprocal love between personal friends, but it is agape, agape, 
which is understanding goodwill for all men and women. I'll paraphrase. It is as an overflowing love which seeks nothing in return. It is the love of God working in the lives of men. This is the love that may well be the salvation of our civilization. Aho. Uh -huh. uh -huh. And he's speaking of that love that we are, that love that is all that is. And here's another quote, and this is from Justice Without Violence, April 3rd, 1957. And he's speaking about this method, which we're calling the love method, and he calls the love method upon occasion. And it's the, the, the love nonviolent me method, method, excuse me. Okay, here's the quote. That is another basic thing about this method. Please mute. That is another basic thing about this method which seeks to achieve justice through nonviolence. It not only avoids external physical violence, but also internal violence of the spirit. The nonviolent resistor realizes that love should be forever at the forefront of his thinking. And as we struggle for justice, as oppressed people all over the world struggle for justice and freedom and human dignity, it is my great hope that we will never succumb to the temptation of indulging in hate campaigns or becoming bitter. For if we hate for hate, if we try to solve the problem by hating in return, we do nothing but intensify the existence of hate in the universe. And somebody has to have some sense in this world and cut off the chain of hate. And that is done through loving. So he's really speaking about the observer effect, the, the, the power we yes. have, where we put our attention. Okay, who's next? So Andrew. And this is another take on the quote that Rita had just shared with us. And on the subject of the creation of the beloved community, which is to me the subject yes. today. The end is reconciliation. The end is redemption. The end is the creation of the beloved community. It is this type of spirit and this type of love that can transform opponents into friends. It is this type of understanding goodwill that will transform the deep gloom of the old age into the exuberant gladness of the new age. It is this love which will bring about miracles in the hearts of men and women. And that's part of a letter from a Birmingham, Birmingham jail down in Alabama. Yeah. And I don't know the date of that. So thank you. And then there's one more quote that um, I'll just read. And that is, love is creative and redemptive. Love builds up and unite. Hate tears down and destroys. The aftermath of the fight with fire method is bitterness and chaos. The aftermath of the love method is reconciliation and creation of the beloved community. So those are the quotes that sets the stage for this discussion. So with that, I'd like to ask you, Rita, Connie, Andrew, and Barry, after you read those quotes and you read them all with deep feeling, what do these quotes say to you? How do they move you in a way that you see um, shines a light, a path forward for this beloved community that Martin Luther King was speaking about? And what is your interpretation of his love method? Because as you all have 
shown via the quotes, that word love is in so many of his words, in his speeches, in his quotes. And it was really important. And often, you know, love is like, oh, well, that's love, boo-hoo, what does that really mean? It's too wimpy. So he took this very, very seriously. And uh, so how are you moved, each of, each of you, by these quotes to take the path forward for beloved community? I'll well, start. Okay, Rita. Okay. <laughs> um, I, I'm just sitting here, my body's tingling to hear these words and realizing the chaos that is going on in the very core of this country. Martin's words are so needed today, his energy, his level of consciousness, his understanding of the human condition is so needed today. And, and this weekend that has been put together, bringing people together to honor his life, to honor his legacy is essential. I, I just feel that these energies are going to flow out through the social media and other places and people will hear the words anew and take them into their hearts. Love is the answer. He said that so many times and his method of sharing that love was to show himself in a nonviolent manner all over the country, but mostly in the South. And just resonates with me so strongly today that this is needed, it's necessary. And I'm grateful to Connie and Andrew for the book, The Trust Frequency, that was partially birthed right here in this office where I'm sitting in Carbondale, Colorado. And the assumptions, the guidance that this book brings is a love method that I believe Martin spoke about. And it's a tool, an actual tool that will put his tenants into the hearts of men and women and children in this country and beyond. Wow, thanks for that. Yeah. Rita, thanks for that. And <clears throat> I'll follow up on that and say that when we realize what Martin Luther King was speaking of, this universal love that is and drives all things, and we move into a higher frequency. And so we move into this higher frequency where there's more abundance than we can fathom. And a whole new way of being comes to pass that we could call the beloved community. We become this beloved community. And the characteristics of this beloved community, this, this life in this higher frequency that, that I've seen for many years and that we bring forth in this Trust Frequency book, we bring toolkits for getting there. We get practical understandings for getting into this higher frequency. And in this higher frequency, trust replaces fear. Ease replaces struggle. Serenity replaces tension. Generosity replaces hoarding. Abundance replaces scarcity. Unity replaces separation. New systems develop, which is what's happening right now as things are collapsing and, and new things are being born because we're, we're resonating on a higher frequency. There's more information, there's new information and it's aligning with our hearts. And then new relationships replace outmoded ways of being because we're just, we're just done with that lower frequency fear and separation stuff. And scarcity, scared, the concept of scarcity has, has driven everything we've done. That we have to hoard to have power and control over others. And then we get, we get to an understanding of the interconnectedness and sacredness of all life. And we come to that because we're resonating to what indigenous peoples 
have known and are caring for us. And that what, what's found in the indigenous ways are, are these attributes that I just wanna mention that sharing as opposed to hoarding and saving, concern for the common good versus individualism at the expense of the common good, cooperation versus competition, concern for the future aspects of present action versus instant gratification, respect and reverence for all of life versus domination and concern for profit. Trust in the loving attributes of a higher power manifested in all action. And this is what he's talking about. Martin Luther King is talking about that higher power, that power of love that we are and living in balance with the rhythms of life versus being driven by man-made concept of time so this is this this beloved community. When we we get in this, it's a whole new ball game. This ball game that we've been playing is not the only ball game. It's the only ball game in this lower frequency. And then understanding the interrelatedness of all things and all actions. That when we act, we affect the collective. When we think, what we think affects the collective versus separation, that we're all just these silos, just separate from everything. We can do anything we want because we're separate from everything. And understanding and trusting abundance versus fear of scarcity, because it's a whole different vibration. And an understanding of the co-creative power of thought versus random co coincidence. And equality between all aspects of life versus human dominance and incorporation of the metaphysical into physical reality versus bound to the limits of physical reality. So these are gifts from the indigenous peoples that are as the foundation of our book, The Trust Frequency, that, that will be characteristics when we move into this beloved community. Do you have some thoughts, Andrew? I do, I do. Yeah. Would you like me to share them? Yeah. I can do that. Please do. Please do. So I mentioned a moment ago that I actually, I'm an Englishman, but I grew up in Africa. <clears throat> I grew up in Durban, South Africa, which, as I mentioned, is where Mahatma Gandhi spent a lot of his time. And when his, in his movement, the movement that transformed India and transformed the world, began in my hometown in South Africa. And Martin Luther King I mean, was, was inspired by Gandhi. And Martin Luther King was very much inspired by Gandhi. And I think we could throw uh, the great American philosopher, Henry David Thoreau in there as well. Yep, absolutely. So all of these inspirations, but I want to focus it through the mouth of Martin Luther King Jr. What came out of his beautiful preacher capacity, his ability to just an orator of unequaled ability. He went to the big picture. Remember, I was in Africa at the time, struggling with something called apartheid, an unjust system where people were judged based on the color of their skin which sounds so foolish from a certain perspective, and yet so many of us have been tainted by these beliefs that people with different skin colors are somehow inferior or superior or some such bizarre nonsensical belief. So let's go to the subject of today's presentation here. It is the beloved community. And it's tempting to want to talk about America right now in this moment, in the first months of the year 2021, when we have reached this point of exceeding division and racism has seemingly has re-emerged. It was hidden and now it's come out again. There's so much that I personally find challenging. So. Let's go to the big picture. What does beloved mean? 
The word love in its human meaning, to me, the closest parallel is the word acceptance. If I can accept you, if I can accept our differences, if I can accept the fact that your belief system, your worldview, your philosophy, your religion is radically different from mine. And yet, if I can see you as a member of my species, a member of my beloved community, meaning that everyone in my personal beloved community is accepted for who they are, for what they are, without judgment, we are the rainbow, this extraordinary species who've managed to divide ourselves up into roughly 200 countries and hundreds of religious sects on and on. It's a very, very strange thing that we have done. And our book, The Trust Frequency, is subtitled 10 Assumptions for a New Paradigm, because these divisions come from assumptions that may once have had a purpose, but quite honestly, many of the assumptions that we grew up with are outdated, erroneous, I would go so far as to say foolish. So what we set out to do is to look at what, what is the root cause of these, this separation, this illusion of separation that we've brought into so powerfully that separates us into different tribes, different, different groups who regard ourselves as the only ones with the truth and everyone else somehow becomes our enemy. It's an interesting thing to ponder. And if we listen deeply to the words and the message of Martin Luther King on this, his birthday, wow, here, is, here are words for the ages. It's time to put these words to work. And I do believe we can do that, my friends. Yes, and build beloved community. So yes. Barry, what are your thoughts? Yeah, real quickly, Barry, before we go on to, I think, Professor Miriam uh, and Rita's um, take on that. If you have a, a quick thought on, um, on this topic, that would be great. And then all of you in the audience, you'll get a chance to chime in shortly. So we're sort of setting the stage and trying to provoke your thoughts a little bit and send them in a direction that where you can share your ideas of uh, how we can uh, build this path of beloved community together. So don't go away. Go ahead, Barry. It brings to mind one ed elder, native elder, he said, we are earth people on a spiritual journey. Our quest is to know who we are. Our quest is to move into our acknowledgement that we are all sentient beings, the animals, the two-legged, the winged ones. And to get past this illusion of division we have to break through the illusion and be reminded that we're all here for the common good of each other and see our likeness, see the spirit in the in Lakesh Ala Khan. I'm just another yourself. Um boom too. I'm it means pretty much being good, even if 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 you bring great harm to my life or my family, Ubuntu is a code that's been long used in Africa. We have to find a common good, move away from indignities and embrace kindness, embrace the love of who we are to bring forth our better angels, our better versions of ourselves. Beautiful, beautiful, Barry. I mean, just a perfect segue to our, our next section. And I think um, it was, it's you, Rita, that wanted to share something from Professor Marion's article. Uh, yes, thank you, Janice. I just need to take a deep breath with all of you and just count the blessings of being able with 
technology to be together today and invite others from around the country, around the globe to come into the resonance of what is being presented here. And I think that Professor Alamehu Mariam in his article, The Unarmed Truth and Unconditional Love of Martin Luther King's message to the Ethiopians that was um, presented in a paper in January of 2018. I want to bring these words forth because the, it's so necessary. Professor Marion said, in Dr. King's vision of the beloved community, poverty, hunger, war, violence, and other similar evils have no place in society because global consciousness and morality will not allow them. In the beloved community, conflict disputes will be resolved by peaceful means among adversaries in the reconciliation process. In the beloved community, trust trumps fear. Truth is spoken to power. The divinity in humanity is cherished. Bigotry is replaced with tolerance and understanding. Bitterness and hate are purged through self-purification to achieve harmony. Human rights correct government wrongs. Dr. King wrote, the aftermath of nonviolence is the creation of the beloved community while the aftermath of violence is tragic bitterness. It is sad that Dr. King's vision of the beloved community today remains a dream, a tattered one. War and violence are everywhere. Racism, sexism, xenophobia, corruption, environmental destruction, human rights violation, and poverty continue to rear their ugly heads. But the struggle to build the beloved community is a never ending labor of love. It must, must go on without pause or rest. Yes. Very, very powerful, Rita. You know, and it makes me think uh, very briefly of the work that I've been blessed to be able to do with the Aboriginal communities in Australia, where they speak of the dream and they learn and listen through dream time. And they speak of the fact that dream time has existed before time, that the dream we are looking to fulfill already exists, that we just have to recognize it. And that's very similar to what Martin Luther King was saying and Gandhi as well. The dream exists and I believe, I know Connie and Andrew might not say this, I think the trust frequency is the pathway to get to that dream because you have to have a level of trust that exists. And when you step into that flow of the trust frequency, you recognize it already exists. Uh, miracles happen not to the, miracles exist with or without us. We just have to accept them. And I know that you have, have heard that as well. And so this might be a really good time to uh, bring in our uh, patient uh, supporters, uh, uh, so that's what you have here. No. How do we get to the beloved community? Right, that's the, the four of us are gonna speak on how we get oh, there. Oh, you're gonna do that first and then you guys get your, guys and gals get your turn. Whoops. Yeah. Uh, I didn't read my notes right. So, okay. <laughs> Connie, Andrew, Rita, Barry, how do we get to this beloved community? In five <laughs> words or less. Yeah. <laughs> In a couple of minutes. And I'll be there now. Be here now. Three words. Be here now. Okay. Who wants to go first? I'll go first. Okay. Thanks, Barry. I think the concept of Martin Luther King's dream is an internal dream that he had, but he was dreaming more so a collective dream. Each and every one of us carry with the light barriers. We carry that dream forward through the struggle, through moving through all the 
the crud and that socially and that dream is a collective dream. And if we embrace it from that way of letting each and every one of us to let our light shine, we will see the manifestation of that dream, the realms of the time when we're not oppressing others, the times that we are friends to our enemies. It is a collective dream. Let's be reminded of the collectiveness. Thanks, Thanks, Barry. Barry. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And Barry, I, I do believe that um, the trust frequency is a collective community building tool. I know that you and several others here in the Valley and uh, have gone through the course with Connie and Andrew, and uh, we playfully call these folks the trust freaks because I'm, they're, I'm one they're of the in, freaks. Yes. <laughs> they're in the <laughs> F R E Q U E. F R E Q U E pronounced. Yes. It means we're in the trust frequency. Yep. And so living through the tenets, taking on the 10 assumptions that Connie and Andrew have laid out in their book is really uh, a gateway to this new paradigm, which I believe Martin Luther King was pointing to and calling for. And mm -hmm. so, so grateful to having had that experience and to be able to uh, support you in articulating this work to others so that the toolkit can be opened and people can realize what is possible when one lives in trust with the loving universe. Wow. Well, thank you, Connie. <laughs> thank you, Andrew. Right, guys, it was, it was <laughs> not intended to be a trust frequency promo piece. I promise you, these people are coming from their hearts and what, how it has impacted them. And we're just so grateful because we've been so far ahead of our time for so long that um, anyway, what I wanted to do is bring a few of those um, aspects of this construct on the nature of the universe that we bring through the Trust Frequency book. And um, what those are, the, just, to, just to give you some, you guys who are listening, some something to take home with you as far as how to get from here to there. Um, and one, one thing we define humanity, we use definitions and we define humanity. And this is very key in, in this definition of humanity that you, you listen to this, these words that I'm saying now and, and take them in as absolutely true. And we're not saying there are absolutely true, but we have this construct that if you take these thoughts and, and axioms, principles as absolutely true, it changes everything. And just see how it resonates to your own heart and your spirit. Not everything that you've been taught um, by our systems, our out of balance systems. Um, and there's a woman, Patricia Ann Davis, who has been speaking uh, with in context of this Martin Luther King um, convergence, who's bringing a, a real uh, reframing process from our thinking to indigenous way thinking, which is very much what Martin Luther King was talking about. So it's a resonance to a higher knowing that's contained in us, that is us. And so here's a definition of humanity, that we are a collection of divine, autonomous, sovereign beings who have chosen to incarnate on earth, to learn and grow on our soul's journey to wholeness which is the journey to self-love and self-acceptance, each with an individual purpose and a unique gift. And the whole universe is awaiting that gift we promised to bring to the party, which is us, all of us. 
So we're on this amazing journey to self-love and self-acceptance. And then I would just say um, two more things that we take as absolutely true. There is only love. And the reason we see things as not love is because we don't understand the nature of that love, that huge love that drives all things. The nature of that love is unconditional. It gives us everything we ask for. And what we don't understand is what are our requests to this loving universe. Once we get what our requests are, and quantum science is proving this and has proved it for some time, and that is the observer effect that what we put our attention on, we create, we, we put our attention on is our reality. And we have seven aspects of consciousness. We say we create reality with the power of our consciousness. And we have seven aspects of our consciousness that we can check on an hourly basis, a daily basis, whenever we want, we can check these seven aspects. We call them the seven A's. And I'm going to say them to you in a sentence, one sentence, and we'll put them in the chat maybe if, if we get time, but try, here they I'll are. try and write fast. No, you say them slow and I'll write them down. Here they are. Okay. With expanded awareness and accurate assumptions, we choose our attitude consciously direct our attention, align with our highest inner promptings, take committed action, which is the kicker because we have to act from that place to get into this frequency, take committed action and allow the loving universe to manifest beyond our wildest dreams. So those seven A's determine our vibratory level and therefore our frequency and every frequency has a different set of laws. So we have the free will to put ourselves in different frequencies once we understand how the universe works. So the, our book is simply a, a construct on the nature of the universe, how the universe works. And Martin Luther King supports the idea that it's all love. And that's who we are. And that's the nature of the universe. And when we understand what creates our reality with our seven aspects of our consciousness, we can walk forward in trust and then anxiety and fear and all those things go away and we access a higher frequency where the beloved community is a given so how about you andrew What's wow <laughs> so andrew has some thoughts okay well an interesting i keep returning to this question of the beloved community and why are we not already a beloved community what happened Surely if we came to this planet from something you might think of as heaven or the unified field or however you want to regard that, and we land on this planet for whatever purpose, it may be an educational experience, it's to learn and to grow on our soul's journey, stuff like that. Um, nevertheless, we have become the most schizophrenic species that I am personally aware of. I don't think elk or field mice or elephants are schizophrenic in the way humans are. Now, uh -huh. we split down the middle, we have a left brain and a right brain. So we have that sort of rational versus intuitive nature built within ourselves. And then in our community, we've divided ourselves into, just to take two examples, a lot of people believe in the, shall we say, the religious vision of the universe. Somewhere far away, there's a place called heaven, and it's presided over by a gentleman with a long white beard called God. And a lot of people believe some version of that, especially in the Judeo-Christian Islamic 
philosophies. And then at the way the opposite pole from that is this so-called scientific paradigm. Well, firstly, we need to be able to measure, to study, to perform experiments, and we learn from that, and we arrive at an understanding of the nature of nature, the nature of the universe, physics, chemistry, biology, all of those things. And people who buy into, especially the old reductionist belief system that came to us from Newton and Descartes and Darwin, they rejected religion lock, stock, and barrel. So there's a schizophrenic split in the human psyche that we actually believe we know how to heal that split. So one of our workshops is called Healing the Split in the Human Psyche. So on that level, we're split into these two huge segments, and then we're split into all these different sects and ethnic groups, and we regard ourselves as different because of differences in language, differences in skin color, and so on. We are one race, one species. We are very, very beautiful. And we've forgotten that. So my question is, how do we go about remembering what I believe to be the truth of existence? We are divine, autonomous, sovereign beings. We're truly wonderful. And yet we don't think of ourselves that way. We've, our self-esteem has taken a huge hit. I think a lot of our behavior comes from low self-esteem. I'll stop there. I would like to, since we're gonna wrap in a couple of minutes, let's ask, uh, unless you have something to say, Connie or Andrew or Rita, let's have, let Barry say a few words and then uh, sing Martin's song. You go, Barry. So Martin's am... song, Dr. Martin Luther King, in fact, he was a king to many. What a beautiful leader and warrior of peace. His motto was quite simple, conquer justice with love. What a beautiful leader was he. He came along when our country was so divided. Segregation and hatred was at an all time high. But instead of choosing aggression and violence, he encouraged and gave hope to so many. The battle of inequality, he showed how the battle of inequality could be won peacefully. And if you were around in my neighborhood, you would hear a song like this. Many of you have heard this song, actually. Smile on me Like the world Love is the answer Shine on me, light the world, love is the answer. Smile on us all, let us hear the call. Remember, love is the answer. Love is the answer. Smile on me. Like the world. Love is the answer. May we all walk in peace and harmony. Smile on me like the world. Love is the answer. Love 
love is the answer. Wow. Harry Chapman, thank you, thank you, sir. It's yes. the only answer. And I think yeah, it is the love. <laughs> it's about the love. <laughs> you had one last quote, I believe, Andrew, if you wanted to um, share that according to my notes. I think that would be good, yes. This is from Dr. Martin Luther King, and it is from his Nobel Peace Prize acceptance speech in 1964. Mm -hmm. He said this, our ultimate goal is to create a beloved community, and this will require a quantitative change in our lives, as well as a qualitative change in our souls. We need to make a supreme effort to generate the readiness, indeed the eagerness, to enter into the new world which is now possible. Quote, the city which hath foundation, whose builder and maker is God, unquote. Mm. Oh, and, what a perfect, perfect ending quote. Mm. And uh, with that, since it's 351, we'll stay for a minute. But for all of you on Facebook, we must end this live stream. We thank you so much for joining us. And we hope that you will take these words to heart and find your own pathway to the beloved community, which truly already exists. You just have to step into the trust freak through the door of the trust frequency and you will be there. So and to get the trust frequency book and a free ebook, you go to the trustfrequency.net and we have a free ebook called The Conscious Loving Universe A Guidebook. So I will put the trust frequency information into the Facebook post uh, when we leave. So thank you again all for coming and Dennis, thank I you. Just so stop the live stream. I just stopped the live stream. So we're here, but we're we're not live anymore. Well, so thanks for hosting us, Janice, and thanks to Summer and Joy Raymer and all the Compassion Games and to Summer Martin and Luther John King. Raymer. What did I say? Joy. Summer, Summer and Joy. Summer Joy Raymer Summer and Joy John Raymer. John Raymer. Yeah, thank you guys. So what a what a delight this was. And thank you everyone for joining us in the Zoom room. Um, what a treat. And we hope that this gives you inspiration to take your lives to that next level of up up vibe into that frequency that the earth is earth has moved into this higher frequency so we're not fighting city hall anymore we don't have to do deep ceremonies and hold the hold the fort we can just open our hearts and know this and is happening and trust mm. the loving universe and and do our own internal work because we have work to do to keep up with the earth so we have to face our shadow. We have an online course called the Dance of Souls for face, understanding this journey to wholeness, this journey to self-love that people come into our lives to show us our shadow so that we can come to terms with it and integrate it and bring it into the light. So that's our journey to keep up with the earth. Thank you. I just like to say one thing, Janice, thank you for bringing the maroon bells into this space. Oh, yeah. yeah. We are speaking from the land of the Ute, the Nooch. Oh, I the wish I had peoples. said that. I wish you had said that in the beginning because I, you know, yeah, I, it reminded me because I know that and it just felt compelled to. Well, actually, I didn't, the connection was already there because I wanted this picture to be here and then when I realized that y'all had started in Aspen and then my connection in Aspen and then just seemed plus I'm in Florida and I miss the mountains so much <laughs> <laughs> the day that I took this picture which you know Connie's a real photographer I'm not That's but this, this picture <laughs> the day that I took this was just it was magical that it came out. So it's like, a, look at how perfect it is. It's really amazing. <laughs> yes, it's beautiful. <laughs> well, see, this is the trust frequency. I didn't do it. I just happened to be in the trust frequency to notice it was there. See, <laughs> it was already there. I didn't make it. I didn't create it. It was there. 
Right. <laughs> and so when I saw the light and the colors, I went, this is it. It's there. I'm going to tap into it. So here, that's a great example, huh? 